Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. It is an absolutely beautiful day, a warm day already this early in the morning, so that means garden work. Um, as you heard on the previous video, we didn't get around to planting our sweet corn, so that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to get the sweet corn planted, and the old saying goes around here, when the dogwoods is blooming, it's time to plant corn, so that's what we're going to do, ain't it? Anyways, guys, let's see what else we get into today, but first we're going to get this sweet corn planted, and I think we got a few other garden things to do today. So, hope y'all enjoy. So like she said, we're planting our sweet corn today. This is going to be the first time we've used our Hoss planter since we've had it. Um, we have had quite a few people reach out wanting to know what we thought about this planter. And so far, I mean, all I can say is it's built good. Like, we haven't used it, so we're going to find out today how well it actually works. I want to show you what we've been using, though. And I will say that we can't complain with this other than the fact that sometimes when you're working in really loose soil or if you're planting into something like this where we have a lot of i want to call it filth or trash or whatever on the soil that you know all of these leaves and stuff or if you've got residue left over from your cover crop or even rocks um the sword that's down here on this planter gets caught on it and it'll bind everything up and sometimes it can make it sort of a pain to use. So the, the creek garden down here is extremely, extremely soft soil. And she would have to run along in the front side of it and pull it while I pushed it from back here to keep it from nose diving into the ground because this was binding everything up. So, but other than that, I mean, it works really good. I mean, we've had it now for at least 10 years. And, uh, you know, we've got all the seed plates for it. Um, and it's worked good. I will say that sometimes some of these seed plates plant things a little closer than what they should be planted, but it's always worked for us. You know, to buy one like this, you're looking at it right around 200 bucks and maybe a little more if you bought the extra seed plates. Now with this thing, it was right around, I wanna say it was close to double what this one was. I wanna say this one set up the way we got it was right around 400 bucks. But I will say this thing is built heavy and if it does what it's supposed to do, it's going to eliminate the problem we had with that one right there. And it's American made by real people here in America, put this thing together. And all of these parts, as far as I know, are crafted here in America. Um, but this one works a little bit different. So come in over here a little closer and let's show them how this one works. So where that one's got that sword that opens up the ground to put the seed in, this one has disc. And Anybody who ever done any type of farming or whatever knows that a disc type planter works a lot better than a planter with a sword on it. So this, to my knowledge, is the only push planter available that's got disc, disc openers on it. And what that does is that allows these discs to pretty much, they, while they still open the ground up, they roll. And so they'll ro they should, in theory, roll over top of all of this stuff that we've got on here for like cover crops and and our leaves that we add to the garden, rocks, you know, you name it, it should just roll over top of it and, it, and essentially work really good. Now, is it gonna do that? I don't know, we're gonna find out here shortly. So, there is one extremely big difference between these two planters that I can already tell you that, and so far, this is the only advantage I see with the Earthway planter over the Hoss planter is that Earthway planter is extremely light. You can just quickly grab it, throw it in the back of your side by side or tote it to your garden or, you know, throw it in the bed of your truck. Heck, you can even throw it in your car seat, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's small, compact and light and easy to handle. Whereas this thing, you know, quality comes with its disadvantages too. This thing is, it's fairly heavy, you know, and um, so I think that's actually going to help us out when it comes to using the thing because of the weight. I believe it's going to work a lot better and it kind of needs to be heavy to make these disc openers work so to have enough weight to push down on the ground. But um, that's the, so far the only disadvantage I see to this thing. And, um, but other than that, I think it's going to work excellent. So we're fixing to find out. So just to give you an idea of size between one and the other, there you go. But once again, this one being bigger also holds its advantages because these bigger wheels are gonna roll better on the ground. 
instead of being hard to roll like these little wheels, the taller handles allow me to stand up straight, whereas, uh -oh, whereas this one, I'm still standing up straight, but once you get it in the ground, like you find yourself hunched over and pushing, you know, so not a lot to really complain about with it, but you know, it's just, I'm being nitpicky here, if you want to know the truth. Like I'm just, just kind of calling it like I see it and being very picky about this. And like I said, you're pretty much looking at double the money for this one. But I really think doing what we're doing, this one's going to be worth it. But we're fixing to find out. So we've got our sweet corn here. We plant Honey Select. And I think we're probably going to get one crop of Honey Select in right here in the spring. And then we're going to try to do a later crop of um, Serendipity. We found last year that we really liked that as well. And we usually, as long as I plant the first crop this early, we usually have time to get in a second crop. But see, the thing is, is in the summertime, that second crop actually grows a lot faster than this first crop because the soil's already hot, the temperatures are hot. So it just kind of hits the ground running where this right here will, you know, our spring planting will sort of be slow to take off with that, you know, at the start, unless it stays really hot like it is today. All right, so first off, I want to tell you the first thing I've done to this planter, matter of fact, I actually done it yesterday. I put some linseed oil on these wooden handles just to kind of protect them because they don't come with a coating on them. But that's a good thing because if you know anything about axes or hand tools or whatever, with wooden handles, you really want them without a coating so you can keep them dressed up with uh, some type of linseed oil or something because most of the time when you go buy a wooden handled uh, piece of uh, hand tool or whatever that's got a coating on the handle, that coating eventually starts peeling off and it don't actually soak in. Like if you weren't to go back over it with some linseed oil, th that coating won't allow it to soak into the wood. So I kind of prefer to have a wood handle that doesn't have a coating. So right here is our seed hopper. Come in here and let's show them how this works. This wheel in the back is your drive wheel. As you can see, it turns this chain, which in turn spins your uh, seed plate inside here. And that allows it right under here. Let me spin it around. You can see there's a hole right there. And as that seed comes around through that hole, it'll drop down that tube and go right down into your disc openers down here. And then you keep this brush on top of all that so it only that brush only allows for one seed to go down at a time so whatever's in that hole is all that will go down and you can't have this right here tight at all like the tighter that is you get some resistance on it and it don't spin good so you keep that extremely loose which it actually says right there do not over tighten so the plate that i have in there is the one that the manual says works with small seeded seed corn, I mean uh, sweet corn. And right there's our corn, and we'll just try it out here. Let's see what it'll do. All right, I'm gonna hold it up so I can see what's actually falling out of this thing. See right there, there's the ones that came out when I was spinning it. Okay. See the seeds falling out there? Mm -hmm. And it looks like, I think I see a couple of times, one, two have came at a time. But pretty much it's just one dropping at a time. So looks like that seed plate's actually going to work. So I'm going to pour a little bit more in there and we'll go get started with it. So before we get started, there is one adjustment I need to make on this, and I'm pretty sure I need to let this planter wheel down a little bit more, and it's extremely easy to adjust. You just turn this knob right here, and that pushes that wheel down trying to figure out how much farther we've got. I think that's it right there. Okay, 
So we've got it set on its deepest setting right now, and we'll just see how that works. Um, this is our row marker, which the Earthway has a row marker too, but I actually broke it like not long after we got it. It kind of broke and fell off, and so I never did use the row marker. And I'm not going to say that this one right here is going to work too great for us because with it sitting out here trying to drag a new row, it may just make it too hard to push. I really don't know. We're going to find out. So it just slides in there just like that. I've already tested it. This row marker works actually, what, the way I've got it adjusted, I'm pretty sure is gonna be perfect for me, me to have room to get my tiller through when we go to cultivate it. And I'm gonna start out with one row right here against the fence, and then we'll work our way out from there. And I hope to get at least four or five rows of corn planted on this first round. So here goes nothing. Let's see if it's going to work. Yeah, that row marker's putting quite a bit of resistance on it here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to like the row marker on there, so we're not going to use that. Our land doesn't work, work up near as good as that sandy stuff they got down south where this thing was made. Oh yeah, but golly, that makes so much easier. Trying to see down in there if I'm dropping corn. Let's go back and dig it out just a little bit and make sure we've got corn seed. Yep, right there's one. Yeah. Now what's gonna be the hard part is judging where I need to go with the next row since I ain't gonna be able to use that row marker. I'm kind of pretty much gonna have to eyeball it. Start right here. The smart thing would be to run a string, but um, we're not gonna do that. Running strings, just, it's too much clean up. Like you gotta run them out and then you gotta pull everything back up. I can pretty much judge it because I can definitely see where I went with the first row. And if I want, I'll tell you what I can do is use that row marker as a guide. In this garden up here, our rows set a little bit closer together because we don't work it with a tractor. We just get in here with the walk behind tiller. So that's what makes it a little bit tougher in this garden when we go to use a planter. We could, like, she, like Megan was just saying, we could lay off rows with a string, and that would probably be the best thing to do. However, we don't always do the best thing. I always just try to make things easy on myself. So right here, I can see, and I can already see out yonder where the rose marker started marking, so we're just gonna make me a straight shot right across there. Hey, we'll find out when this stuff starts coming up how straight I got. All right. So I see my old row right there. I'm gonna go use that. I'll just gauge it like this. We're about that far apart. So we wanna go right there. Then I'm gonna make me a spot down here. I'm actually gonna set me a couple of rocks right there and I'll use that as my site. One thing I noticed is where this one is so much easier to push that it's actually easy to push it in a straight line. Whereas that earthway, where it was constantly grabbing the ground, it would turn you and you wouldn't realize it. So this works so much better. Oh, 
Well, I'm not sure how well it's planting, but I can tell you one thing, it's pushing a whole lot better. My goodness, it's amazing the difference. I will fertilize it once the corn comes up and I'll go right across it, like right beside it with some 10, 10, 10 or something such as that. And I usually only have to apply fertilizer in this garden to my corn one time and that's it. Because I think it's a lot to do with the fact that we've built this soil up as good as we have. Like that earthway planter over there, the way the disc and the hopper shaped in it, it carries the, the, the seed on the side of the hopper instead of in the bottom. And so you can actually see that seed be picked up and dropped off into the tube hole. Whereas this, you can't see that. I'll tell you what, let's plant this last row with the, with the earthway and just kind of do a little comparison with the two. All right, so we're gonna put this very last row in with the earthway planter. And you know, this will sort of give us a comparison too as far as seeing how thick the corn's planted versus how thick it gets planted with this one. I really think it's gonna be planted quite a bit thicker with this one, but I might be wrong. And then you guys will get to see how well this one works in the garden as well. So like already, look at me. I mean, it's working, but gosh, I can see a huge difference in pushing this thing versus that other one. And this row right here is not gonna be near as straight because it's just where we've got that sword, it's kicking it around every which way. You see right there, all of our residue and everything gets caught on that sword. Like I said, this thing gets the job done. It's not about that. However, I wouldn't want to be planting like a ton of seeds and some big, huge plots of sweet corn or beans or whatever. You don't want to be using this. It's just like down there across the creek, I had pretty much decided it from now on, I was going to plant that with a tractor. Even though it's not worth hooking the tractor up to the planter for, the planter's just so much easier behind the tractor versus this, but now that we have that, I think I'm gonna plant every bit of the popcorn, our beans and everything with that planter right there this year, and I won't have to use the tractor to do the planter. So, you know, I think it just all depends on what you're after. If you do a small garden and you're planting this right here is all you're gonna plant, you know, it's probably not worth spending twice the amount of money on that planter versus this planter. But you know, if you're the serious gardener that's putting in a lot of seeds, that thing over there, I wouldn't be afraid to say will last you the rest of your life. However, if you take care of it, this one will last too. But that one over there will make it so much easier to do. So I guess that's it for our, field, for our sweet corn. Now later on, once this stuff starts coming up and I see it up about, I don't know, about yay high, I will come back in, like I said, and side dress it with some 10, 10, 10. And, uh, but until then, I just let it go. Let it do its thing until it gets that high. Then once it gets on up about this high, we'll come in with the hoe and, and heal the dirt up around it. And that's a pretty important step to corn is healing that dirt up because it needs that support around the base of that plant to, for when it gets tall so it don't just fall over. But if anybody is interested in anything from Hoss Tools or interested in that planter, whatever, we will have an affiliate link in the description. Um, it doesn't cost you a dime to use it. It'll be just like you went straight to their website. However, it does sort of give us like a small commission if you do buy something when you click on that link. And you know, I'll just be up front with you. We would get some, some uh, you know, a small kickback on that. Um, but I'm not here to sell you this thing because, I mean, as you can see, I've used this one for years, and we'll, we'll put a link in the description of this one as well. Pretty sure you can get these on Amazon now. And, uh, you know, you can make that choice for yourself, whether you want to spend that much money on that planter and have a lifetime investment and something that's going to work well for you, or if you want to spend it on this and just do a small amount of planting every year. Um, you know, as time goes on, we'll be using that planter to plant beans, to plant 
our peas and doing all that good stuff and our popcorn. So make sure you keep watching and see if our opinions change. But right now, I think that thing is going to be the the way to go. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about planting more. I wish we could go plant more right now. We ain't quite ready for that yet. But anyways, we've got to go get our potatoes cleaned out. We're going to go try out the, uh, the little Kubota cultivating tractor today. Y'all seen on the last video, I got it all set up and ready to cultivate with. So we're going to go try that out today and see how well that's going to work. One, one last thing I do want to mention about this is both of these planters beat planting it by hand. To me, there is nothing no more worse than going out here with a bunch of corn, especially, uh, you know, if you're planting squash, cucumbers, pumpkins, stuff like that, it's fine to just lay you some seeds in the, in the row and then cover them up. But when you're planting beans and corn, something that you're only planting about that far apart, to me, that's just time consuming. And that's something I ain't never liked to do with plant like beans or corn by hand. So both of these planters, beat planting it by hand in my opinion anyways i would spend the money all day long just so i didn't have to plant a patch by hand but that's just me other people may be different and like to plant it by hand so y'all we were just playing with this thing just off camera just because we were curious to see if it was really planting as deep as it was as deep as it would go and i just realized that i still had another inch of adjustment on this thing that um and so i could have planted at least another inch deeper now i realize how it works we're we're learning and y'all of course know me i didn't read the owner's manual the only thing i checked out in the owner's manual was what seed plates to use <laughs> so um i just wanted to clarify that real quick that it does plant deeper than uh than what we just planted All right, so we'll be taking the tractor and this up there, and I just want to make sure I've got my impact gun and I've got my wrenches here, just in case I have to adjust on those plows, which I'm about positive I'm going to have to. If I've got it right on the first try, I done good. So we're going to go see how this goes. We've come up here to the potato patch. Um, it's about a mile from our house. And this is where we planted our potatoes last year and they did great. So we're gonna plant them here again this year. We usually move them about every three or four years, something like that. But we've got, uh, Andy's on his newest toy out here today. And he's probably gonna have to do some adjusting, maybe not, um, but he adjusted the rollers and stuff at the house. But as you can see, the rye, that we have planted here is coming back, which we're not too concerned about it because when it starts getting hot, it'll die off anyway. 
but we're gonna chop this and see if we can get some of the weeds out before they get too out of hand. So you can see underneath the tractor there, those are the rollers and they push dirt up against the potatoes um, and may even cover some up. And if they get covered up, it's okay. They will come through. But we've got some coming up. You see there's some. This is working pretty good, where especially where I'm going so slow. I've got them things adjusted to where they're throwing, where they're throwing dirt, but I'm going so slow it's not really covering like, them too bad. It's not covering them. It is covering some of them, but they're like barely covered, so they should just push right on through right, that. Right, right, right. Um, but what I was going to say is, I think what we're going to have to do instead of hoeing these right here is just walk through and pull, pull that rye out of the middle of the road. Okay. Um, Cause that's, they're so close together that I'm afraid we'll hit the potatoes if we go in and hoe it. Hoe right, it. right. But um, it is working though. Yeah, it looks good. I'm just having to go slow. The biggest thing with this tractor is trying to figure out, you know, in my head on the 140, all of my controls are right here. So I just, I know where to reach. And on this one, I'm having to, right, right. I'm having to think about it. Right. But it's working. So. Uh, well, we'll do that. This actually turned out pretty good. I've got one plow on the back, that one right there. For some reason, it's sinking a little bit deeper, so I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of adjusting on that, but that's no big deal. Um, but in case you didn't know, potatoes are the one crop that you can actually wrap up and cover up and they'll still push right back through the dirt. I actually know some people who have um, completely wrapped their potatoes up before once they bust through the ground, they wrap them up again and then let them push back through the dirt. Um, so I never have really liked doing that. We tried it one year and I noticed that about half of them didn't come out. Maybe I wrapped them up too deep, I don't know. But some of these are wrapped up, but they're not wrapped up to the point that they'd be deep enough that they won't push right back through it with no problem. However, um, I've got to adjust my plows to go through my onions. I've got them fixed so they're throwing dirt now. Now I just need to straighten them up to where we're just ruffling up the dirt. And I'm gonna get that done real quick. So y'all see what I'm doing here. I've got, I'm loosening these two bolts and I'm just gonna twist this plow, this uh, cultivator around. And that will fix it so instead of it, like all this is pointing towards the inside now, I'm just gonna run it straight to go through our row of onions and carrots right here because I don't wanna throw any dirt towards them. more like that right there. I think that'll work.
once you get it right, well, you've got it. So now you can see my plows don't sit quite as close together now, so I can actually go through the next row with a little more speed, most likely. But I'll just be tearing up on the outside of the row there. So like on the outside of where I've got the onions and carrots planted. Because I do not want to disturb, especially my carrots, I do not want to disturb those. Well, you can probably still see the green out there in the field, but all of that grass and wheat, well, it's, it was right. It was coming up from our cover crop. All that's now loosened up and broke up. You can see our potatoes right here. This is probably the best row as far as one's coming up. The other rows over there, they, you know, there's a potato here and there. They ain't quite there yet. Well, I'm going to run up and uh, start tearing up our field corn field and uh, getting that cover crop worked in. And before I go, I want to show you our starts here. These are the ones we've been growing inside. This is the first day they've been outside in the sunlight, but it's a beautiful day. So we decided to just set them out and let them get some real sunlight. But they look great, y'all. These are some of the best looking starts we've ever had. And all I know is, you know, I was worried about, I was worried about those tomatoes getting leggy all I know is that how, that that grow light from Hoff's tool must be a lot more powerful than the other one that we had because none of my plants ever even began to get leggy and I had the light quite a bit farther off than uh than what we have been having with our other grow light we had. But we're gonna go run these chisel plows through the field up there and get it all busted up and then I'm gonna go back over it with the disc and hopefully get all that um, cover crop worked into the ground and begin the process of getting it ready to plant. What's for supper tonight? Hog dough. We're going to have some spicy, sweet chicken tenders when they get done. And leftover pink eyes. And baked sweet potatoes. Cooked on the Blackstone. Yep, it's so pretty out here. I stopped by that I took out here. First time this year. That's right. I like cooking on this thing pretty good, though. It's smelling good. These are our chicken tenders, if you're wondering why they look kind of halfway messed up. Uh, these are ones that from our chickens that we saved. Yep, and that, they're kind of hard to get off. <laughs> the expert butcher cut them out, didn't she? It was me and you, thank you. <laughs> That's right. You done all the separating. Yeah, you're right about that. I forgot I did, didn't I? <laughs> So we got some sweet, sticky, hot chicken tenders, which I think will be wonderful. So is that that's the same sauce that you made that time on those chicken wings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're gonna be delicious. Some hog jaw, some leftover peas, Mikey. Jacob's eating steak. Jacob's got fillets. Yeah. yeah he's eating high on the hog tonight, or high on the cow, should I say. Yeah, you can have this little piece. But anyways, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed Bye. today's video. Hope you might have learned a little something. And anyways, till we see y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one. See y'all later, y'all.